my name is Dora Rome. I'm a biologist. I'm working in the city of Copenhagen, promoting the philosophy of green roofs in urban design and planning. In Denmark, we have strong focus on climate adaptation and creating sustainable cities. We have high goals for reduction of greenhouse gas emission and increase of renewable energy. We have faced that we are not only in a financial crisis, but we are also in a climate crisis, which is equally important to address. And if we do that in a clever way, we maybe can solve both challenges at the same time. But I believe it's important that we work together to discuss and discover and understand the nature of sustainable economy and sustainable urban design and planning. The ultimate goal must be to meet the needs of today without compromising the future generations to meet their needs. And I think a unique corner of this is green roofs because of the multitudes of benefits it offers. How can green roofs uh, meet the challenge of today and tomorrow and transform our living? And how do we make this happen? Which city cannot recognize a situation like this flooding in our streets, costing billions? Or urban heat island effect, higher temperatures in our city? Or the growing concern about biodiversity? But it's no wonder that we are facing these challenges because of the traditional way we have been developed our cities, removing all land cover, replace it with parking lots, buildings and roads. But there is an alternative to this. This is one of my favorite illustrating the alternative, the combination of nature, building, the coexistence of nature, cities, citizens and buildings. This is a building that provides temporary accommodation for families whose critical ill children are being treated in the neighboring hospital. And by bringing nature in the building, the idea from the architect Fritten Hundewasser was to give the parents the opportunity to regain strength and give the children what medicine cannot, love, strength and confidence. The motto behind this project is, if one dream, it's a dream. If many people dream together, it's a start of a new reality. So I think that we should start dream together and make this to a reality, greener cities. When we are transforming conventional roofing to green roofs, living, breathing, vegetated roof systems composed of substrate and vegetation, it acts like a meadow does. It absorbs infiltrate, evaporate the rainwater. Then we are using the rainwater as the living research it is, instead of let it flood as fast as possible into our sewer system and take up capacity. Worldwide, we have huge amounts of investigation about benefits of green roofs from Portland, New York, Toronto, and cities in Germany and Asia. And threatened biodiversity, few years ago, an emergency call to save bees came out from the European Parliament. The fact is that a high number of bees has fallen by 10 to 30 percent, and two-thirds of our food production depends on pollination from bees. But by bringing nature back to cities by means of green roofs, we offer a habitat to support biodiversity. But we have to make sure to design the green roof in the right way. And I think that we can learn much from countries in Switzerland leading green roof supporting biodiversity with their law regulation in Zurich, Basel and Lucerne. This roof is a beautiful and brilliant example of the combination of many options in green roofs. It has been designed by the Professor Stefan Braneisen and follow the guideline for supporting biodiversity. But at the same time, you can see we have solar panels in the combination with green roofs and the tricks on the green roof has been designed to create a sculpture. So it's a very beautiful aesthetic solution at the same time. In Denmark, we are also dealing with the concern of threatened biodiversity. In fact, a, a cooperation project has been starting up with architects, biologues and nursery farms. And they have developed a concept of seven different biotopes, each with more than 20 native species. They have been collected native species. 
and sawn them. And here you can see the test result. And now we are ready to go out to test an unreal roof. Amongst the many purposes of green roofs, add functionality is another very interesting option that green roofs offer. This green roof on the healthcare building on Toronto with a running track show us how we can use the green roof as a sustainable design to foster a bond between humans and nature, increasing the likelihood of their healthy coexistence. Urban farming on the rooftop provides us with great opportunities for fresh supplies of herbs, crispy cucumbers, red juicy tomatoes, tasty strawberries, for people in cities who else would not have such kind of possibility. And a benefit of green roofs that can never be overestimated is the beautification of our cities. It's easy to imagine the beautiful view the people in these surrounding buildings have got after the retrofit of the library in Philadelphia. Our children in cities can have green surrounding where it else would not be an option, like this school in Chicago and this school in Copenhagen with herbs, strawberries, apple trees. This is another interesting project in Copenhagen showing us the future of green roofs as a part of urban design and planning. Here is the site of a former railway and industry area on the edge of one of the most traffic heavy streets of Copenhagen. The purpose of the master plan is to create an urban commercial area with green and natural appearance. The green high line landscape is being lifted seven meters above the ground to create views of central Copenhagen and create security and accessibility. This is the area in Copenhagen with the least green area per capita. So this solution will provide this district with new green area for the citizens. The first green roof is a green roof on SAB Bank. It's composed of a staircase covered with trees and from that on you can go directly from the street and from that on you can go to the next green roof on the new Danish National Archive. On this green roof it's like a park. You can sit in small garden rooms on benches surrounded with strawberry beds and intertwining flowering plants. This small gardens is constructed alongside the whole project. From that green roof, you walk on to the third green roof on Teolius Congress Center. And by time when the whole project is finished, two areas in the city will be connected and accessible for the public to walk through. All these functions that green roof offer gives us a whole new way to live and enjoy life in cities. So it's no wonder that green roofs are a worldwide growing effort to transform our living in cities. But still we can accelerate this transition to greener cities using different kinds of incitement structure like regulation, incentives, public relations. The priorities and tools will naturally vary depending on region, culture and local ecosystem issues. Like regulation being used in Denmark, in Germany and in the US, using green roof stature, nature conservation regulation, building codes, incentives being used in many cities worldwide, giving directly financial support to green roofs or reduced stormwater taxes or fees, density bonus, public relation, which cities do not have their own demonstration project. Many cities have very useful homepages about green roofs. And cities are using kind of green roof competition, giving awards to the most unique green roofs, and so on. Green roofs are not a new idea. In fact, Scandinavia have a long tradition for green roofs. The inspiration in Copenhagen to reboost green roofs came from the work with our wastewater plan 2008. This was the first planned document that focused on local ways to handle rainwater. And we became aware of the importance of green roofs as a part of this. We have been through a process like many other cities worldwide, with congresses, planning and technical research. Workshops, seminars and congresses are a unique platform for sharing knowledge and experiences about green roofs and starting up a dialogue about the challenges and benefits of green roofs, creating a common platform and not least, starting up building a very important network, a network worldwide. Often these kind of events uh, or projects create attention in the media and through the years many articles have been written in 
nationwide newspaper and science paper or being part of programs in radio or television, which is important to reach every corner in the society and a different perspective because this attention creates growing curiosity and knowledge about green roofs as a sustainable and climate adapted alternative. As a part of the process, it has been important to involve science institutions and a very successful cooperation project between public, private and science institutions has been running since 2010 called Water in Cities. In this group we are dealing with different aspects of green roofs with the main goal to create a common platform of knowledge that can help boosting the green roofs in Denmark. And test center working with demonstration of green roofs has started up as well. In the last years, we have been through an intense planning period, starting with our wastewater plan and then the climate plan, which was a kind of milestone with high ambitions for green roofs for the next municipal plan. And since then, we have incorporated green roofs in quite many different guidelines. Guidelines for local ways to handle rainwater, guidelines for supporting biodiversity. And in 2010, we decided to make a green roofs policy, mandating green roofs. Later on, we decided to change this policy and integrate it in the municipal plan of 2011. And since 2010, we have mandated green roofs in most new local plans. And calculation based on approved local plans in 2010 and 2011 will give us more than 200,000 square meters of green roofs in the coming year. Among the many local plans where we have mandated green roofs, one of the most interesting one is the local plan for North Harbour. North Harbour is Scandinavia's biggest developing area at the moment. We have high visions for this area. We want to set new standards for sustainable climate adapted solution and development. Here we have mandate that every building has to be constructed with a slope, roof slope less than 30 degrees and with vegetation on. Have we through this long process meet any challenges at all? Yes, of course we have. We can accelerate the transition by experimenting and encouraging green roof solution by setting up public-private partnerships, sharing knowledge and enabling people to make sustainable choices. But green urbanization, for that we need commitment to clear ambitious goals. Government and local politicians must enable cities to become platforms for innovative green urban philosophy as green roof infrastructure. We need sustained, strong leadership to ensure this focus in our planning. Because one of our challenges is the financial aspect. Green roof cost, it's an extra investment. So if we, through our framing, can help boosting the green roof development by incentive structures that makes a green roof's choice easier, we can at the same time meet another very important challenge to which we should be concerned. That's about the quality, not only in the green roof's elements and installation and maintenance, but also in the way that we mandate green roofs. So we make sure that the performance of green roofs will meet the expected result. And that's more easy to do if we, at the same time, support the green roofs with subsidies followed by some requirements. My conclusion is that we are very far in the transformation worldwide. We have tremendous focus on green, sustainable and climate adapted urban design and planning. And to continue this good process, we need sustained, strong leadership, committed to the goal of a better tomorrow. We need intelligent regulation, making sure that we get the quality in our solution. No doubt that it should be financially favorable to choose the green roof solutions that will benefit the society as a whole.